I can just listen to this all day. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Portia Wheatley. I am the founder and the president of a nonprofit organization acknowledged as Trophy of Life Incorporated. And we have the great pleasure of rendering hope and encouragement to individuals around the world. Let's say hello to our co-hosts on today. Hello, everybody. Happy <laughs> Tuesday. I hope everyone's having a great day. I am so happy to be here. I am happy to have you as always. And we will introduce our guests momentarily, but we wanted you to take the opportunity, whether during, after, or sometime soon, if you have not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. And also share, comment. Um, let's, let's get this word of hope, encouragement, and inspiration around the world. And I need you and you need me, okay? Let's work as a team and we're gonna get this done. Well, today we are going to talk about courage. Isn't that amazing? Um, just think about some things that you had to have courage to do. Um, with this pandemic, nowadays it's kind of like, um, we need someone in our corner to encourage us to do almost anything if you don't have faith, if you don't have the faith to do it, or even whether it's children, adults, children needs to be, need to be encouraged, adults need to be encouraged, and um, there are some things that I know you have wanted to do uh, years back. You wanted to do them, but you didn't have the courage to do so, but this is a new day, and we're going to do some things that we've never done before. It's going to take faith, it's going to take courage, it's going to take boldness and all of that. But believe me when I say you can do it, you can do it, especially if it's a desire of your heart. The word of the Lord says he would give us the desire of our heart. If, let me back up, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, we're going to talk about it today, courage. And I want you to put some things on your mind as to what you need courage to do or some things that you've been thinking about. And it's like, oh, okay, Lord, put your hand in my back and let's do this. Not thinking about anybody else. This is what I wanted to do for a while now. And I'm going to do it. You really have to talk to yourself like that. I am going to do it. Yes. Well, today my guest is Lisa Jones. Mm, Lisa Jones, dear Heavenly Father. Her <laughs> name is not, uh, her name is not Lisa Jones. It is it's Lisa fine. Green. Oh, Lord, I bet your husband was going to say something too. He better not be listening. Well, maybe listening. I'm sorry, Alex. Her name is Lisa Green. <laughs> anyway, uh, she's a cousin, actually a cousin of mine. Aren't we cousins? I yes, so. absolutely. Somewhere down the line, we're cousins. So, uh, But the fact of the matter is she has a story about some of the things in her life that she's been wanting to do, and she finally got the courage to do them. So we're gonna it, we're going to introduce to some and present to others, and also bring a word of hope, encouragement, and inspiration to the listening audience about courage. Okay, Lisa, thank you for accepting our invitation. Come on and share with us. Well, Portia, I want to thank you for um, allowing me to be on your platform. Um, this is probably like my first time being on Facebook, you know, and just sharing. Um, so I just wanted to really just share my story. Um, I am a multi-business owner. Um, it was, it didn't come easy. Um, I've always known ever since I was a little girl that I wanted to have my own business. Um, and I, down through the years, I would say, you know, um, who says that I'm ready to go to lunch at 12 o'clock, <laughs> you know, or who says I want to take a break now. So ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to, you know, be, have my own business and do, you know, and call my own shots. Um, so years ago, I really didn't, um, didn't really know what I wanted to do exactly. So what happened was um, once my husband and I, we got married and we began to travel and go different places and we joined a travel club and, you know, we just really enjoyed the perks that the travel club had to offer. Really didn't think about, you know, turning it into a business or anything like that, but just really just enjoyed it. Um, but one particular uh, trip that we did, um, at matter of fact, it was November the 8th, 2008. I'll never forget it. Um, I didn't know that that day was going to, I was, I would always remember that day. Um, we had just gotten off the Carnival Imagination and there was the other um, ship, which was uh, Carnival Legend, I believe. 
Um, and, and, and as we began to walk down, we're going to Cosmel. And when we was walking, something happened to me. I really couldn't explain it. All I could say was something happened to me. It was like I belong there. Not that I wanted to live there or anything like that, you know, but it's just like something happened to me. And I never knew exactly what, had in, what I had encountered. Um, but later on, I would find out years later, I would find out that what happened to me was when I felt like I, I was, I, I, that was where I was meant to be was it was the marketplace. And I had never heard of the marketplace, okay? I had never heard of it. All I knew was, you know, God put this in my heart to bring me to be a business owner. And I just felt like I just, you know, had to be there. And then when it came down to business, I was very passionate about it. Um, but really still didn't understand. It really didn't have a lot of people around me that talk business, that wanted to go into their own business, you know, to launch. I really didn't have a lot of people around me like that. And so it was kind of hard for me to really accept that, okay, um, you know, going into business, um, anybody else had that same idea? And it was kind of hard for me. So really, I didn't have um, enough thought in my mind to say, you know, a business is what I need to be doing. And so from us traveling and all like that, and then we uh, began to look at the uh, travel industry in a serious way, like, um, okay, well, maybe we need to, um, you know, really think about this. And we went on a couple of trips, did a couple of cruises with some friends and ours and, you know, really enjoyed it and all like that. And then um, my husband, he wanted to open up a transportation company. And I'm like, okay, well, I think I can run that, but really didn't really think I could, but, you know, um, and then so we opened up a transportation company. And then I was like, um, you know, I really need to really seriously think about it. At the same time, I'm still on a full-time job. And while I'm still on a full-time job, I'm thinking, listen, this is job security. I'm not going anywhere. I'm making okay money. It's paying my bills. But really to think about uh, really launching out, I just really didn't think about that. But until one moment I realized, hey, you know what? If I stay here, I'm not going to go any further. And do I really want to stay here for the rest of my life? And when I get old and this is as far as I want to go? And I really began to really sit down and really think about, you know, what do I really want to do? And so uh, one day I said, you know what, I'm going to leave this job. And when I, when I first got, got there, I mean, I had a pretty good job. I was working with the state of Maryland. And when I first got there, I told myself, I will not be here for 30 years. Don't even think about it. They were like, Lisa, you will be here. Go by so fast. And I guess around the 20th year, when I realized that I wasn't going to be moving any further, wasn't going to be making any more money, I really be, had to sit down and really think about, hey, these businesses that we have, let me take a real serious look at it. All along, like I said, I really didn't have anybody around me to push me to say, well, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that. And, you know, um, you know, of course, you know, I've been in church for over 25, 25 years, which I love, um, you know, love the Lord dearly. And, but even in the church, I found that, you know, there wasn't a lot of people that was really talking about becoming business owners at that time. And so it really began to be, you know, a little hard for me. I didn't have the courage to just do it by myself, <laughs> you know? So, um, and then later on in life, and, you know, I really began to see that that uh, nine to five job really wasn't going anywhere. And about three years ago, I made a decision. I got up enough courage to say, you know what? And I was praying, I said, God, I don't want to move out of your timing. Timing is so important, even though it was something that I wanted to do, but I still couldn't move out on my own. And I said, God, you know, um, I really want to move out. And I just felt that if you don't do it now, it'll never happen. And I was like, okay, so I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to step out on faith. And I do believe that at that time when I stepped out on faith, I know that God was with me because even with this pandemic, I mean, I would be in trouble if I, if I wasn't being led by God. And so I began to really step out. I really thought that some things I could not do. I couldn't imagine myself figuring out how to run a business. Even though I had, even though my jobs and different things that I had did down through the years, it really helped prepare me. And it was a matter of me really having the courage to say, you know what? I am going to trust God. I know that he didn't bring me this far to leave me. And I'm really going to step out on faith and really, really trust God. Because guess what? A lot of times we say that we trust God, but we don't give him nothing to work with. You know, and so I began to really just step out and trust in him. And then I never forget, I, read, I heard somebody say something about the marketplace. And I was like, the marketplace? What the world? 
And I just could not believe I heard somebody talk about the marketplace. Going back to when I was, uh, when we were on that uh, cruise ship and what happened to me, I could not put it into words what happened to me back then. But what happened to me was, I, what I was feeling was, this is what God wanted me to do. There were people that were in the business arena that I am going to have to reach. And it took me, I'm going to be honest with you, it took me years to really, to come to grips with that. That you know what, I mean, yes, um, there are people that are going to be inside of the church, but what are the what about the people that are on the outside of the church that are in the marketplace that we need to reach? They need God as well. And so, you know, in the past, probably past year, I really began to dig within myself, like, God, what do you really want me to do? And, you know, I, and with my faith in God, I had posted something on Facebook because um, I just turned 50 last week. I posted something on Facebook, really trusting God, like, you know what, God, I know that this is what you've called me to do. And I know that this is the time that you want me to do it in. So I put on there, I can't remember exactly what I said. So I put on there, you know, you have uh, faced some obstacles that you didn't think you was going to be able to cross. But with your faith in God, you made it. Drive, go forth and don't look back. And that is just my motto. You know, I am just, you know, just trusting God, even in the uncertainty. God always put people in my path that need to be in my path. He'll put people in my life that I need. If I cannot figure out something myself, he always puts somebody right there. So I want to just really say to everybody, if you really, if there's a, um, if there's a business or if there's a, a dream that you have, yes, the, the fear is going to try to come and grip you, but it's either now or never. We got to have to just really just step out on faith. God is, God didn't bring us this far to leave us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as long as you trust in him, he'll be right there. And when, even when you, I remember one time um, I was so nervous about a particular uh, thing that I was trying to take care of. And I said, God, I said, I do not know what I'm going to do. I said, I don't know exactly how to handle this. And of course, I'm um, on this one particular day while I was working, God put that person right in my path. And they was like, you know what? I'm an expert at that, you know, and I can handle that for you. So, uh, you know, I just thank God just for just having the courage just to step out. I'm not going to say it's always been easy, but I, I thank God that, you know, I put my trust in him. And I don't, I try not to make any decisions without saying, God, okay, is this what you want me to do? Or is this, is this okay for me to do? That is so vital and that is so important because sometimes you can do things and if you don't consult God, then you'll wish that you had never done that before, you know, so and I just thank God, you know, and I just, uh, I'm just trusting him. And it just seemed like every day he, he's always, you know, always surprising me and just telling me, you know, that Lisa, okay, when I think I can't do something, and then I go ahead and I just go with what I know, man, I'll tell you what, he'll look like, make you look like a pro. <laughs> And yes, and that's what I love so much about God. You know, I mean, if there's anything, I mean, I know that sometimes, like, like I said, the fear will always try to grip us, but just step out, walk by faith. As Steve Harvey would say, just jump. It's not going to be that bad. God, when you jump, you'll be surprised. God is just waiting for us to jump so we can jump right into his arms and we can just go to him and say, well, how do you want me to do this? What do you want me to do? You know, so I just wanted to just share with everybody, you know, just really. And then I want to uh, share also something else with you. And I want to thank Elder uh, Wheatley. Um, this was a book here. Uh, let's see, hopefully you guys can see it. Jesus, uh, Marketplace Jesus. Yes. This book was so, so good. I wish I had it years ago. But, you know, one thing I uh, also want to say, too. If I had told, I had said to the Lord, I said, you know what, God, I feel like I've wasted so much time. And, but one thing I'm learning there, God never, there's never no time wasted because he's always teaching us something, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through. I find that I asked God, a matter of fact, I asked him this morning, I said, what was the lesson? If you can figure out the lesson that God was trying to teach you, half the battle is over, you know, and this morning I, I want to share this. So this morning, um, I had a little incident that happened. And I was like, God, I said, oh, I don't understand why that, why that happened. But then it also taught me that, okay, sometimes you have to let people know exactly what your, what your desires are and what you want and what you expect. And once you get that down, 
and then you both will know exactly what your desires and what your wants are and what you expect, hey, it's going to be a smooth sailing. That's for so sure. Yes. Yeah, so I just want everybody to really just sit down and really uh, uh, think, what do I want to do? You know, what, what has God really been tugging on my heart that I've really been putting off? Uh, what, what has God really, you know, I really have this desire to do this one thing. You know, you may not have somebody to encourage you. You know, that, that's not going to always happen. But you know what? I'm learning to encourage myself. I am my biggest cheerleader. <laughs> Haven't always been that way uh, because most of the time I always think about what I can't do. Or, you know, what if this, what if this, what if that? Well, what if it does work? What if it does, uh, you know, come out with a good income, I mean, a, a good outcome? What happens if that is? And so many times we always can think about the negative and let it alone, you'll have other people around you that's going to remind you of that as well. You know what I mean? But then that's the time that really you have to really just, um, you know, just encourage yourself. Um, and, I, and I really mean that, you know, I am my biggest encouragement. Uh, even though my husband encouraged me, but it's nothing like having that down on the inside encouragement of yourself, knowing that, you know what, hey, I can, I can get this done. And then you'll be surprised. And then God will come right in and give you the strength and show you exactly what to do. So I'm so really thankful for, you know, just being able to come on here and just share, you know, and that's my main thing in life I want to do. I want to be able to uplift, to encourage um, Project 365, when you first got started, I was like, I want to be a part of that because it's so very important. A lot of people are dealing with a lot of things in life. They may not say anything to you, family members or anything like that. They'll hold it to themselves and won't say anything and be struggling no matter what it may be. But, um, you know, we just want to be able to give people hope, give them some encouragement. If you don't have anything positive, say, just keep it to yourself, put it in your pocket, you know, because you never know. Everybody's not sharing everything of, you know, different battles that they're going through. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. First thing I wanted to say is raise that book again. I want everybody to know that this book was written by our Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis. So that is an excellent book. It's called Marketplace Jesus. If you want to do any kind of work, anything, any vision yes. for a business, Marketplace Jesus is the book to have. All right. Okay. If you have any questions about the name of it again, or the author, Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis, he's the man, I'm telling you, uh, full of wealth. He's my spiritual father, and I'm so very grateful for that. Um, what a question I have for you. How yes. did it feel? How, let me see. No, 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 no. Oh, how did it feel when, um, I know you had some fear. What, how mm -hmm. did you kind of like dismiss the fear? Because I know you had the thought to do. But I know there was some fear there in doing what you know you were called to do. You were called to do that. But um, yes. what did you do? Well, um, so when I left my job, uh, the minute that I walked out the door, I said, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> that was the one fear. But, you know, um, because I have, um, even though I would hear God say, do this, do that, and I just just could not get the grip of it was possible that I could do it even though the word says um well God all things are possible I can do um anything to to Christ who gives me the strength even though I had that but it was just that fear of well God what if and honestly I got sick and tired of myself saying um I couldn't do something and then mm -hmm. after and being 50 years old well Lisa what are you going to say you're able to do it what are you going to really trust God what are you really going to take him at his word? You know what you know his voice. You know what he's saying to you. What are you going to? What are you really going to walk by faith? Mm. And I gotta say this: um, a couple of weeks ago, I was on a, um, another um, a seminar, and they asked the question. And oh my God, this thing changed my life. They asked my. They asked the question of, uh, when was the last time you felt unstoppable? And I've always been told, whatever your first answer that comes to your mind, you know, go with that. And my answer was, when I was a single parent raising two children. What? Why? You mean to tell me I'm serving God and I call myself trusting him and that was the last time I felt unstoppable? Mm. That question changed my life. It really, really changed my life. 
But I had to say to myself, when are you going to, when are you going to really just step out? And then that question really just, I'm really now doing self-evaluation of myself of saying, Lisa, okay, why is this? Why do you, why do you say no to this? Or why do you feel this way? Why do you, you know, what, what's stopping you? And now that I'm, I'm starting to trust God, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm not. You're unstoppable now. You're, un oh, you're really oh, unstoppable yes. now. So oh, this yes. is a good thing. Last, last but not least, I wanted to encourage you to continue to build um, uh, your knowledge about business. And you have to do that with people that know more than you. Mm -hmm. The people around you, they cannot be on the same level as you. They have to be people that know more than you or more knowledgeable than you so that mm -hmm. you can climb, have a place to climb to. Okay, so yes. yeah, it, it may not be around you. I mean, when I say you, even myself, it may mm -hmm. not be around me. So you go looking for it. And God yeah. would definitely direct you to that person that you need to uh, get information from. Can I share something with you? Yep. Um, God has really placed some people in my life that are like way, you know, way over top that can help me and encourage me. And, and I'm like, God, this is it. But had I not stepped out, I wouldn't have been meeting those people. That's true. I wouldn't have those people in my life. I wouldn't have been introduced to those people because yep. I would have been still st staying back and saying, I can't do this again. But I'm learning that as I'm moving forward, those people that need to be in my life, or in your life. Yes. And you have to block out other people. Other people that, are, okay, I'm, all right, got it. I'm looking at my time. <laughs> you got to block out other people That's because true. other people would say, and it amazes me how other people say, oh, you can't, I don't think you'll be able to do that when they've never done it themselves. Absolutely. So you can't tell me not to go somewhere where you've never been. Absolutely. So, Takira. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you. So, as I always say, thank you so much for joining us, Miss um, Lisa, on our broadcast. I tell you, entrepreneurship is really something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, and I love hearing uh, stories, success stories of people who have taken the risk and, you know, had courage enough to believe in themselves and take that next step. So, I just thank you know, thank you for sharing your encouragement because we all need it. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to just um, give a couple points. Um, some of this is recapping and then some of this may be uh, helpful to anyone. I know it was helpful to me. So on um, being an entrepreneur, guys, um, I believe an entrepreneur is made up of five things, okay? So you have passion, that's number one, perseverance, resilience, proactiveness, and the right attitude, okay? Um, number one, passion. If you don't love what you do, then don't do it. <laughs> like you can define your life. Like if you're unhappy with what you're doing, you're like, I have this great idea, just do it. Have that courage, have that boldness to believe in yourself and take that risk to do it. Even if what you wanna do is already out there in the marketplace. You can either make it better or you just make it your own. Even though we are like similar as people, none of us are the same. We're all unique. And you are the only one that can be you. And you're the only one that can add your flair and your flavor to it. Look at this Project 365. So many people have broadcasts and, and, and podcasts, you know, to talk about whatever. And if, if our wonderful CEO over here say, you know what? I really want to encourage people, but someone already is doing that. No, we wouldn't be here. You make it your own. You make it you. And for your, uh, for my believers out there, the first thing you need to do, if you know you have an idea and you're called to be an entrepreneur, talk to God first. Say, hey, God, you know what? I got this idea. All ideas come from him. If, if, if he didn't want you to pursue that, it wouldn't have been in here or in here. So look at that passion that you have, talk to God, say, hey, you know, I love this God, make this work for me. And then God make it so I can make some money off of it, you know? <laughs> so those five things, um, challenge yourself, push yourself. Also, let's do the research. Like if you want to do it, whatever it is you want to do, whatever um, area in the marketplace, do your research. Just don't go jumping out there, jump out there, but jump out there in a smart way. Um, Number one, trust yourself. You have to believe in yourself. 
to begin with. If you're a believer, you rely on God, okay? He's not giving us the spirit of fear. He wants us to be courageous and bold. That's who he's made us to be. If you're not a believer, it's okay. Start speaking those positive things. Speak those affirmations. You are this. You are that. You are not this. You're not that. That's how you do that. Visualize your goals. Say, hmm, this is where I want to be. What do I have to do to get there? So put your, your big goal up top and then start backtracking. Okay, so to get here, I got to get here. To get here, I got to start here. Take baby steps. And that's how you start getting to your big goals. Don't be afraid to partner up or collaborate with someone else. That's like the biggest thing. A lot of times I see entrepreneurs have an amazing idea, but they're not as successful as they could be because they want to hoard everything and keep it to themselves. And sometimes God is like, no, no, no. I gave this to you so you can meet this person and they can meet that person. And you guys put it together to be who you're supposed to be and to get this idea across. And I'm almost done. Um, in, in collaborating with people, you have to be coachable. Like you said, you don't know everything. You shouldn't be the smartest person in the room. You should always align yourself with people who know more than you, especially about the area you're trying to get into. Um, so you have to be coachable and you have to be able to take creative criticism. It's a difference between listening to somebody that's hating on you, like, girl, I know you can't do that. And someone saying, hey, you know what? This is great, but maybe you can do A, B, and C. And it doesn't mean you have to listen or do their, what they're suggesting to do, but just hear them out. Be open to other ideas of, or ways to make your idea better. Um, let me see. And also when you're trying to, um, when you figure out your passion and you're ready to, to go out there, think about who's your consumer, who are you marketing to, like who's that target audience that you are reaching to. Like Project 365, our target audience is everybody, but because <laughs> everybody needs hope, encouragement, and inspiration, but we have that focus. So find out who's your consumer, get that focus, and um, also, I also wanted to say uh, successful entrepreneurs act. So you can have a great idea, but like she said, if you don't put yourself out there and have the courage, you're just going to be a dreamer. And dreamers are amazing, but let's act on those dreams. That's how you create that fulfillment of being who you're supposed to be and fulfilling your purpose and making some money while doing it. And lastly, guys, just believe in yourself. Really, you can do it. It's going to be amazing. Put yourself out there. God will work out the rest. Absolutely. He absolutely will. I'm looking in the uh, chat room or the post. Dr. LaVon Shaw says, go with what she knows. Go with what we know. Go with what I know. And God will make you look like a pro. He yes. will make you look like a pro. Be especially if you're doing something from your heart. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, we want to be um, have some type of income from it. However, there are sometimes there are things that you do that does not have income attached to it, but you present that idea to God and those that are believers present the idea to God. Those that are not believers, they still think it through, you know, they think it through. Sometimes they overthink it or people overthink it, but they think it through, you know? So I'm just, I encourage you, Lisa, just and entrepreneurs, not just Lisa, um, to be confident. Yes. You know, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. You know, having, being confident in yourself, I got this. And the, got, the I is the God power that's living in you. I got this. And you, it may sound cocky, but it's confidence. You know, woe is me, now nah, toss it out the window. Mm -mm. I can't do, nope, I can't, nope, nope, won't work. So I encourage you again to go after your dreams. Do what is in your heart to do. And God's right there. And people are looking at you. Little country girl, look, little country, look, little country girl, it, it is what it is. Look, take the heels off, put some jeans on, and I'll, I'll work with you. Put, Give me a gown. I work with you there too. So, you know, it, it's just who we are. And I appreciate who God has made me. It hasn't always been like that. But now, um, look, come hell or high water, I'm not going back to where I was. I am so grateful for the teachings of my mom and my dad. 
and uh, my husband, as well as my senior pastor, my current senior pastor, as well as my uh, spiritual father. And I am so grateful for who God has made us. And it's only just the beginning of where we're going. Well, um, today is February the 16th. This is the second month of our health challenge. Don't forget, we have a health challenge going on. Um, take a picture of you on the scale and um, you lose, what, 25 pounds, Takira? 25 pounds. 25 pounds and you get compensated for 25 pounds, that the 25 pounds that you lose. Um, the end date is July 16th. And uh, you send that information to me at info at trophyoflife.org. Um, I mean, you can send it now. You have up to 25 pounds to lose to July the 16th, or you can send it July 15th and lose pound 25 pounds. <laughs> 25 pounds in one day. Hey, no, it is what it is, but you still get it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, let me see. That's the health challenge. It was something else. Oh, if you, uh, whatever segment that you enjoyed the most mm -hmm. for the month of February, we already did January. Our winner for January was Latoria Hall. Um, and she received a $50 uh, gift card. And the month of February, I'm not going to tell you what it is until after it's presented. Uh, so you email me at info at trophyoflife.org uh, what segment you enjoy the most. I know all of them are good because all of them are different topics. Some resonate with you, some others don't, but they're all good. Um, so if you enjoy any of them, email me, let me know. You just might be the winner for the month. So on that note, I think I've done everything I needed to do. I almost feel like I'm in church. I, all my hearts and minds are clear. <laughs> anyway, I love you. I love you. Thanks again, Lisa, for uh, your support in sharing the information that you shared, yeah, the information that you gleaned from Takira <laughs> and all of, all of my um, listeners viewers, those that are going to YouTube, the YouTube channel and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate you. We need you to take this message of hope, encouragement, and inspiration around the world. On that note, we shall see you on tomorrow. Blessings. <music>